between Washington and DC. Uh, today, from the platform, this is the first meeting of the uh, month, and from the platform, we will be having a talk on gratitude. Often we feel grateful for the good, for the services, for the friends, for the uh, health that we have. Uh, but at times we forget of being at service and those who are at service to us. And um, in today's talk, uh, we will be talking about the Jacob's Ladder, where everyone is being helped and everyone is helping. And of all of those seen and unseen helpers that are guiding us in our ascension and our journey. And uh, expressing our gratitude to them for the guidance and for the assistance in uh, our evolution and our ascension. Uh, I would like to remind of the United Lodge of Theosophy's declaration and uh, welcome again everyone for, to this talk. The policy of the Lodge is independent devotion uh, to the cause of Theosophy without professing attachment to any Theosophical organization. It is loyal to the great founders of the Theosophical movement, but does not concern itself with dissension or differences in individual opinion. And next Sunday, uh, we will be meeting on Google Meet and continue with the reading on Ocean of Theosophy. And uh, now we'll proceed uh, with the reading from uh, Voice of Silence. Yeah. Difficult it is to obtain birth as a human being. Difficult it is to live the life of a man. Difficult it is to get to hear the true law. Difficult it is to attain the enlightenment. From the voice of silence. That which is on create abides in thee. Disciple as it abides in that hall. If thou wilt reach it and blend the two, thou must divest thyself of thy dark garments of illusion. Stifle the voice of flesh. Allow no image of the senses to get between its light and thine. That thus the twain may blend in one, and having learnt thine own Anya, flee from the hall of learning. This hall is dangerous, and its prodigious beauty is needed but for thy probation. Beware Lanu, lest dazzled by elusive radiance thy soul should linger, and be caught in its deceptive light. The light shines from the jewel. Great and snare. The sense it bewitches blinds the mind and leaves the unwary and abandoned breath. The moth attracted to the dazzling flame of thy night lamp is doomed to perish in the viscid oil. The unwary soul that fails to grapple with the mocking demon of illusion will reach to earth the slave of Mara. Behold the hosts of the soul. Watch how they hover over the stormy seas of human life and how exhausted, bleeding, broken wind, winged, they drop one after another on the swelling waves. Tossed by the fierce winds, chased by the gale, they drift into the eddies and disappear within the first great vortex. If through the hall of wisdom thou wilt reach the veil of bliss, disciple, close fast thy senses against the great dire fierce day of separateness that weans thee from the rest. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, friends. The United States and Canada and some 15 other countries celebrate Thanksgiving in or near November. Beginning early in the 17th century, pilgrims in the New England states gathered for a religious day of prayer with gratitude for such blessings as safe journeys, military victories, and abundant harvests. After hundreds of years of attempts to establish a national uh, holiday for Thanksgiving, President Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt issued a proclamation designating the fourth Thursday of November as Thanksgiving Day for this country, which is on November 24th this year. Thanksgiving Day celebrations have largely evolved into games and parades and families getting together to feast. Our theme for this month is true gratitude. Usually people are grateful for some help or 
kind treatment received from others, or from my mercy shown towards them in their hour of difficulty. It would be ungracious not to feel so, but it is not enough. The Theosophical Movement points out that, number one, if you can see it uh, from the internet, uh, from Fruit Live, that's good. If you can't, it will be on uh, www.urtbc so you can see it. True gratitude is a rare virtue. And in, in our civilization, when constant, when constant demands are made for one or another type of rights and privileges, without any consideration as to how much we owe others and what our responsibility towards them is. A reverential feeling of the human heart should flow out spontaneously in every direction. To the visible and invisible worlds, and to great, great mother nature for all the wonderful gifts that she bestows freely. True gratitude has no boundaries. It expands more and more as we can, can recognize the law of interdependence to an ever grow, greater extent. Not only are human beings dependent on one another, all beings, high or low, great or small, to get along in this evolutionary march, have to aid and be aided by others. So we have a, lots of things to be, like lots of folks to be thankful for, seen or unseen. This universe is, is vibrant with different powers and forces. It is guided by divine intelligences and, it is, and is not a mechanical or fortuitous concurrence of atoms. Therefore, first and foremost, a wholehearted gratitude should go out to number two, one divine principle of life. The one below uh, addressed in the first of the three fundamentals of theosophy uh, necessary to consider is in, in the main in, 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 uh, Possessing nature's law. It is the source and origin of everything. From the state, sorry firmament above to the dust below our feet, each human being, as a divine ray, has embarked, has emanated from, from uh, the eternal source, the one from it, and with, with all other emanations from the same source, the divine and universal and personal principle. Usually petitions are made to a personal God for some kind of favors or benefits. When these are not responded to, people get disappointed and annoyed, annoyed not understanding the law of karma. All the great teachers have taught time and time again that one should meditate and reflect on the self of all creatures and work in harmony with it so as to reach the nature, statue, and dignity of conscious godhood, which is the goal of every human being. When man considers himself to be a miserable sinner or believes that he has descended from the apes, how can he put forth an effort to rise to the divine origin? Above all limitations, and how can true gratitude overflow from the heart? It is number three, the recognition of unity with one and all that enables man to express his heartfelt gratitude. A ray of divine light and light is the eternal pilgrim going the rounds of his pilgrimage on earth, gaining wisdom, experience, and power. It needs a bodily vehicle to work through to contact the objective world and objective things. 
to adjust the carbon balance and to step onward and forward on the great journey. That vehicle is provided by one's parents in terms of past vanities as they guard and protect one through the years of childhood and beyond. We can only realize the date of the four debt of gratitude we owe to our parents. As to reflect upon and try to understand the words of Lord Buddha, as pointed out in verse 182, read by the first student, the first speaker read uh, from the Dhammapada. These days, how many are there who realize this truth and pay their respectful homage to their parents? Everything is taken for granted in life, has, has become such a mechanical process that children forget their responsibility to their parents. The body provided by the parents is not a solid mass of matter, but is made up of different kinds of lines constantly coming in and going. Human, animal, vegetable, mineral, theory, water, air, earth, We've all had experiences in those areas. We, we, may not, we may not remember those experiences, but we have them. To keep them all working harmoniously is the duty of the inner world. They belong to different hierarchies, each working according to the law of its own being. The body is considered as something to enjoy life with and is not generally looked upon with reverence. It is pampered by most people, tortured by a few, and is no longer the appropriate instrument it ought to be. Through self-control and self-discipline, the body can become a living temple to a living God. It is said that the inner, the inner ruler has under its command a kingdom as vast as the universe in miniature which has to be ruled efficiently. Nevertheless, people generally are in the habit of looking outside when all this power and force is within ourselves. Beings of various degrees uh, do much for us. It is the duty of each one through deliberate choice to gather the right impress so that the demons under our command, which is all within ourselves, under command, are not degraded, but through our general help are ever uplifted. The connecting link between man's body formed of different lives and the divine ray, which is the eternal program, is manas. The thinker endowed with self-consciousness the great prerogative of mankind. At a certain stage in our pilgrimage, the divine intelligence actually incarnated on earth to light up the mind of man, turning consciousness into self-consciousness. Theosophy, they, they, uh, theosophically, they are known as the mind-born sons of Brahma, a hierarchy by itself. This is how the lines of evolution have converged together and brought a human being on the scene so that through self-choice and self-determination, he may reach the, de the destined goal of human perfection. The mind is the instrument of the self-conscious thinker who, like the body, has to be nourished well and kept clear of dross. Volume 1, page 38 of the Secret Doctrine, defines the human mind as the sum, as the sum of the states of consciousness grouped on the thoughts, will, and feelings. The brain is the instrument of the mind, which it has, has to be raised up to the plane of a divinity, thought, will, and feeling does. That task is to be done reverently and gratefully, day after day, till man, the thinker, 
attains conscious union with his divine parent, uh, known in Sanskrit as Atma Buddhi. What about gratitude to the millions of our fellow pilgrims, the workers in the field, the fellow factories and mines, from the big bosses to the low level workers, all of us who serve us, us on, on different lines. Only through our loving thoughts and feeling can we show our gratitude to our fellow pilgrims. Consciously or unconsciously, do so much for us unasked. Were it not for the, these unknown millions, how would we go uh, get the wherewithal of life? Are we not indebted to great mother nature, number six? Or um, at every step, at every turn, her bounties and, and utilities are too many to be mentioned. Nature is ever ready to serve us. Are we ready to help nature by embodying right knowledge and for, for, protecting it with right love? In majestic realms, the glowing rivers, the green fields, and multicolored flowers, the vast oceans, the deep forests, the sun, the moon, the stars, all provide us with the necessities, never for a moment considering their benefit or reward. Hidden in the bosom of nature are deep secrets to be unveiled, but she shows her treasures only to the eye of spirit. It is only when through self-purification that the spiritual vision, the divine eye, is open that she becomes the friend and ally of man, grateful for having the opportunity to help and serve. What only shall we pay out of the heart's gratitude to number seven, the older brothers, the great masters of wisdom and compassion, the custodians of the secret lore, who, out of their compassion, the sacred lore, out of their com compassion, sacrificed the peace and bliss of nirvana to help suffering humanity. It is only through the study of their philosophy and service of their humanity that we may express, in however small and insignificant a measure, our gratitude. You see, the key to theosophy associates number eight, gratitude for self-sacrifice, a far higher standard and equal justice to all and love to every creature. Self-sacrifice is the giving to others more than to oneself. Such, such was the standard and abounding measure which more uh, so preeminently the greatest teachers and masters of humanity, such as Quatma, Buddha in history, and Jesus of Nazareth in the gospel. This trait alone was enough to secure to them the perpetual reverence and gratitude of the generations of men that come, came after them. To, to say, however, that self sacrifice Self-sacrifice has to be performed with discrimination. We can't just uh, do something and think we're doing self-sacrifice without uh, uh, some discrimination and knowledge. And such as uh, such a self-abandonment is made without justice or blindly blindly regarded as a subsequent revenge re re results may often prove not only in vain, but harmful. A fundamental role of theosophy is number nine. Justice to oneself, viewed as a unit of collective humanity, not as a personal self-justice, not more, but not, not less than others, unless indeed by the sacrifice of the oneself, we can benefit the many. As for charity, one should act individually and not collectively where possible. 
the theosophical idea of the charity means number 10 personal exertion for others personal mercy, mercy and kindness personal interest in the welfare of those who suffer personal sympathy or thought and assistance in their troubles or needs the Osophists believe in giving money you do this money, uh, it would be able to provide a thousand fold great power and effectiveness by our personal contact and sympathy with those who need it. We believe in relieving the starvation of the soul as much or more than the emptiness of the stomach. The Osophist teaches that, number two, number 11, more benefit accrues to the one who feels gratitude and to the one for whom it is felt. Hence, number 12, gratitude is a divine virtue which should be cultivated. Nothing is more strongly exemplified in the great one than gratitude. The author requires us no synthesis of cardinal virtues nor mortal sins, but if it did, gratitude might head the virtues in, in Ingratitude is sins. Ingratitude is not counted merely a defect, but a crime and a fault in them. Number 13. Ingratitude is one of the deep dyed taint, is one of the deep dyed taint of human nature which degrades man and which should be expunged from our hearts. The masters, custodians of the secret wisdom, have declared that ingratitude is not one of their vices. If our modern civilization is a deep crisis of human and ecological degradation, it is because generally, number 14, man is it, at the present time has lost the spiritual perception of the essential unity of life. And with that lack, he has estranged himself from the that in a heart quality of reverence, love, and gratitude for our lives, for the bounties of nature, which are not, which are now sadly come to lift upon as commodities to be exploited and desecrated for selfish ends. Number 15, gratitude is essentially a heart quality. It has de been defined as recognition of benefits received, but this definition explains only half of its meaning. Recognition is largely a mental process, while gratitude involves the heart as well as the mind. It is the action of Buddhi manas, recognition of appreciation, the interplay of heart and mind. It is number 16, the opportunity to serve that should evoke our gratitude. By accepting the fundamental truth that all life is one and live accordingly. You're okay. By accepting number six, the opportunity to accept 16, 16. The opportunity by it is uh, the opportunity to serve that should evoke our gratitude. By accepting the fundamental truth that all life is one and live accordingly, our sympathy is awakened. The number 17, cultivation of sympathy in and for the good of others is an important, is as important for the growth and evolution of character as is the elimination of selfishness. Regarding all life as one, we recognize the, the, and appreciate the life-giving sun and the beneficent rain, the productive earth and the invigorated air. We find number 18, those to whom we listen for knowledge and help and inspiration. Are they not entitled to recognition and appreciation of benefits received? For well, this self 
in each one of us is the real teachers, yet there are number 19, those who have pointed the way of knowledge of the real self. By, but for them, the way would have remained hidden deep in the dark forest of superstition and ignorance. Their messages, messenger uh, sent out the world, sent out to the world to pro proclaim the fact that there is a way. Right? They were to ceaselessly suffer and die for the self evident fact concerning the way, the truth, and the life. They are recording, they are all recorded in the writings that uh, they have uh, initiated. They have left us a legacy to all mankind. Earnest theosophists, those who desire spiritual development among all things, and are eager to make theosophy a living power in their lives, should pause here and reflect. Upon the altar of their hearts, they should make the sacrifice of selfishness and uncharitable uh, thoughts and desires. And upon that same altar, offer up a profound recognition of and appreciation of benefits received. Number 20. Anyone can cultivate feeling of thankfulness. Just, be, just being grateful is a fine thing to do. Gratitude helps mightily to untie the, the knots of the heart, which being all smoothed out, make clear a channel for the flow of divine Compassion. And for that compassion, compassion absolute incarnate in William Q. Judge. To see compassion absolute incarnate in action, take a look at letter number 21 of Letters That Have Helped Me by Mr. Judge. This letter from Jasper Neiman, a pen name that Mr. Judge used, writing to himself. While seriously ill, and in this student's opinion, is yet another indication why HVB call when you when you do judges for pure body booty. The letter in part says, while life hangs in the balance, you speaking to himself will feel much depression. Why should you not why should you not uh, live now as long as you can? In the present body, and to life, to and to life, to do, do as much as you can to the cause and man. Complete knowledge must be obtained by the triune man, body, soul, and spirit. By living as long as one can, one gives the self that longer chance. The union of the priority is only to be accomplished on earth in a body, and then re release is desirable. We dare try to hope and live on that. We may serve the masses and the, they serve as they serve the law. We're not to try to be chairless or do any one thing or the, in, in this reincarnation, but only to know and to be just as much as we can be. If you accuse or doubt yourself, then you give in to the enemy, you give it to the chance to rest. Rise then from this despondency, he's uh, feeling at this moment, and seize the soul of knowledge. With it and with love, the universal the universe is conquerable. All the body, although the body is painful, you yourself are all right, he says himself. We have in very, 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 very long ways to suffer, and it is a great advance if we can. And in the midst of physical suffering, grasp and hold ourselves calm. When the body gets stronger, more is known. We make our stories. In the stream of evolution, each circumstance must be to us quite right. And in our failures to perform such acts, such acts should be our greatest help. For we can in no 
other way learned that calmness which Krishna insists upon. Yet, if, if all our plans succeeded, then no contrast would appear for us. These plans uh, would make it ignorance and that's longer sometimes. But kind nature will not permit us to carry them out. We get no blame for the plan, but we may acquire harm to bear it by not accepting the possibility of achieving, achieving such plans. If we're all cast down by just uh, that much on our thoughts, listen, and count. One could be confined in prison and yet be a worker for the cause. So I pray you to remove from your own mind any distaste for present circumstances. If you look at it as just, just what you in fact desire, then it will act not only in as a strengthener of your good thoughts and make your body stronger. I have been rereading the life of Buddha and it is finds me with a longing, longing deep desire to give myself for humanity, to devote myself to a fierce determined effort to plant myself near the altar of sacrifice. As I do not always know just what ought to be done, I must stand on what the master says. Do what you can at the moment, if you ever expect to see them. This being true, and another adept saying, follow the path they and I show, but do not follow my path. And he wrote a chamber once said, that which is done in master's name, without the thought of self, the right motive comes out right. Ten thousand adepts can do no more, no one, no good, no group. Ten thousand adepts can do no one, no good, unless we ourselves are ready. And they ought, and they only act as suggestions to us and possibility, what possibilities there are in every human heart. If we, we dwell within ourselves and must live and die by ourselves, it must follow that running here and there to see anything or person does not in itself get progress. Mind, I do not know, I do not oppose consorting with those who are uh, who read holy books and are engaged in toiling on high themes. This should not be done as an end. It is only a minute, only a minute, and one for many. There is no help in the vocation to those who think as we do and like to read good books. The best advice is to read holy books or whatever book to then tend to elevate you as you have found by experience like the Gita. The most important thing is to develop the self image and then the possessions of wisdom to be reminded to all wise men and look forward to us. The mystery of the ages is, is, each, is each man. Patience is needed in order that the passage of time required a bodily instrument to be altered or controlled is complete. While the control is not uh, as good as, as general control, continuously and firmly will relax. Generous is better because an opposition corrupt is always provoked by the uh, uh, for, by uh, violent control. And of course, if that which produces it is, is general, it will also be the same. This gives the unaccustomed student more time and gradual strength you know, to uh, continue. Do, do not cry yourself nor ache to puzzle your brains with another's emotions. You are great 
and generous generosity and love, strong in faith and straight in perception. Generosity and love are the abandonment of self. That is your staff. Increase your confidence, not in your abilities, but in the great all being thyself. Happy Thanksgiving. Formal presentation, but uh, I think no, no, it's here. We can see them here. Okay. Uh, so we now we'll open the floor for questions, comments, questions. Uh, which you may I know we covered a lot of them. Uh, there's a lot of people, lot, a lot to be thankful for. I think that's what uh, the the gist of the message is. And a lot of a lot of things we don't uh, re re recognize, at least in the physical world, that mm -hmm. uh, that give give uh, aid to who we are today, mm -hmm. and what and uh, the opportunities to service. For me, it was very interesting to see that ingratitude is a crime in occultism. If you know or have any reference, where did it start? Like in which sort of, where would it be sort of the origin of that idea? It's for me just so profound. Separation. So, yeah, the idea of we're separate people, mm -hmm. separate entities. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're all uh, one part of the whole. Yes, we have a, our self individuality needs and our. And then, and then, then um, when we are invited, we have to have personalities and all the lower natures with us. But we can't, we can't uh, be a victim of those personalities and lower mm -hmm. natures. We've got to rise above that to the individuality level, which will lead us to be one with all. So we we work with nature to help her out, because nature is what is a combination of us. Mm -hmm. So if we um, are acting on behalf of our neighbor, and as well as ourselves, we, we can't forget ourselves. But we're not forgetting ourselves by helping to um, raise others because we can't go too far on our own. So we have to put, bring it, bring everything and everyone up with us. And uh, sometimes we forget that. Uh, we mm -hmm. know, but we can't do that. So we have a challenge in, in this this little time we spend in body is a time we have as a chance to grow, a chance to make a difference in this world. Because if we see look at ourselves as foot soldiers for the uh, for the uh, all, uh, that's per per pro accurate uh, process. That's pro pro accurate process of the, what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We're we yes we're here to to advance ourselves individually, but that's just a byproduct. That that was what we be concerned about. Other than that, will happen if we uh, do what we're supposed to do while we're invited. And then when we're not invited, we assimilate all we've learned while we're invited. And hopefully we uh, we have uh, done some good things and moved up the ladder to perfection somewhere along the way. Mm -hmm. But that's not our goal, which is to become a channel. It's a it's a mm -hmm. Something we just it just happens if we do what we're supposed to do. Uh, just a comment. So, uh, one of the masters said uh, in the 19th century that gratitude is not one of their vices, uh, yeah. and that is something that if that we should all strive to follow that uh, advice. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that you said uh, ingratitude is. Uh, is something we need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Once you're from our hearts, it says, 
and replace it with gratitude for everything and every, everyone around us, even even when we're challenged. That's that's probably the, uh, the, the quickest way to learn is to to get challenged by someone mm -hmm. who's not uh, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. uh, doing what we think is right. Uh, we have to try to guide them gently and move on. Help them, help them as best we can. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much time we got left. I'm lost my time. We've got 15 minutes. We've got 15 minutes? Okay, we can stay online. Good. You know. Talk among ourselves and whatever points that we want to make on, on this talk or or anything else we want to talk, talk about. It's the next 15 minutes because we have a program, uh, that we're expanding a uh, program for starting in January, and uh, that is under uh, consideration now. Uh, all of these points, I mean, there's plenty of points we can. But, uh, delve into a little bit. Uh, I just mentioned a few of them. Uh, uh, there's a there's a multitude of tables that we that says we're, we've got 33 million or something, whatever that is. I don't this leader doesn't understand that, except I accept it right now until I can understand it. Uh, we are we I can understand this. We are micro microcosms of the macrocosm and the each one of us has within has within himself a uh, a army uh, that they don't know about uh, that is uh, dependent on us uh, trying to raise them up. We cannot. We don't have to know about them to know, know to know intuitively that they're there and. Uh, and we need to have to look inside ourselves to uh, carry on. And as we as we look inside, we learn more about the universe because we are micro we are, we are many many cop, many copies of the universe that we look outside of us. That is un incomprehensible because that is a you know that goes on to from one universe to the other. So it, it's a, it doesn't, you, we draw it in a circle, but it's a circle without, um, without bounds. So it's amazing when you think about what our questions possible to think about. Maybe you can tell a little bit more about the elder brothers, who they are. Yeah, there's a um, we uh, again on the material level we can only see more, so much. We can only see uh, I I can only tell you tell by you as an individual uh, this is what you what you physically look like and uh, and how you act. I can see, see how you act, but I can't tell what your motive is what you act. I can't even tell what my motive is, my, my, my own motive is most of the time. But try in that direction, that's what we all do. So, but uh, the older brothers is a uh, uh, spoken of very frequently uh, in the literature as a, a group of people, uh, those who have uh, many of them have uh, chosen to come back to help humanity by by their example. Jesus and uh, Buddha, uh, Krishna, uh, that group. There's a, there's a there's a a mass of them, uh, and they come and they they don't have to go through the uh, uh, earthly experience like we do if we want to move out because they've already done that. They, they come to uh, show us the way. Mm -hmm. but 
I don't know how many. <laughs> I, I can't say how many. There's a never stream of them out there. Mm -hmm. And there's, it's very difficult. You, we have to, I say difficult, we have to go through the experience we go through if we all ever want to, like I said, like you said, the paper said, if we ever want to be in front of them. Mm -hmm. to, so they said that they are so electrically charged that uh, we would fall apart right mm -hmm. now if, if we never. Mm -hmm. But also, but they they know how to reach us at our level too. It said that uh, that that. that uh, in their lodge, wherever that is, uh, people uh, around them know who they are. I don't know, but uh, there are humans that know who they are. But uh, they are it's described like at a mountaintop, at the, and you can't see the top, and that's mm -hmm. where they are. Um, but they, they guess. Mm -hmm. um, you can you the best I guess the best way you can do it is to look inside yourself. Do you know who you are? I don't think many of us really know. I know I don't. But uh, I know who I'm who I hope I I am trying to be. Um, so I've heard this reminded me, I've heard it, I just read, um, it was in the Jungian psychology, the uh, the word individuation, it was described in a very new way for me, because individuation sounds like you're individuating from the whole, you're becoming yourself, but there it was described as a two words in individuation, in and divided, and actually individuation is opposite from becoming individual and separate it's bringing divisions within the self into wholeness so that that was quite interesting because in is bringing everything in and, and the situation is divisions yeah. mm -hmm. resolving divisions within self and that's what you can resolve divisions then within society community uh, wherever you are yeah that that very kind of question would ask uh, uh, uh Senior spirit, um, mm -hmm. is that how how do you say that we're separate but we're not separate? Mm -hmm. And uh, the easy answer is there's three three things about us that carry on from life to life. The uh, Atma Buddhi Manas, uh, the, uh, actually Atma is, we can take up. The Buddhi Manas is is really the thing that we're growing, and as we perfect something that. That gets uh, in the, with the Buddha monitors until we become affected. Mm -hmm. And that could take as long as we want, I guess. As long as it takes, I don't know how long it takes. It, it, could, it, it, could, it, could be, it becomes rather individualized, I guess, the point where you, uh, you just come, you come, you do your duty. Um, Mr. George says duty is a uh, royal talisman. This is why he pushed it. Yeah, I think he described it. You do your duty. If you're washing dishes, you do your best to, to do that uh, and so forth. And that's how we we, we progress. Mm -hmm. And it's not you're not supposed to, you know, cram your head full of stuff. Uh, you're supposed to learn, you know, you, you learn uh, what all the stuff. Uh, Said today, it's a, it's somewhere in what's what the theosophic the theosophic approach is, and you try to become that. See, uh, one step at a time, the seven uh, uh, parameters are uh, right, 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 right in front of us. That's one way to do it. What is the first one? Love and charity and love. Mm -hmm. And then, then you get on your way and to becoming a god. But you have to, you have to encompass that in all your actions. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've, well, we got a couple more minutes. And so we got a quiet group out there. <laughs>
But anyhow, um, like I said, we're continuing on next Sunday uh, with the old ocean of theosophy by Mr. Judge and the uh, answers and questions. The ocean of theosophy, uh, the, we do try to go through the uh, secret doctrines, but it's the kind of thing that, uh, uh, you know, you can spend your lifetime doing that. But the ocean, the ocean is, that Mr. George put out is, is designed for the Western mind. Uh, and it's uh, much more con contents. And so we're going through that, with, maybe with the idea in mind of uh, 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 maybe trying to go through secret doctrine and other, other things like that. But right now, we've got our hands full just going through the ocean of theosophy. And that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're going to start, we're going to continue that uh, next Sunday. And if you got, if you, I think every, everybody that's uh, on this is all, all in, in, on, on Google Meet. So, um, but anybody that uh, wants to get on Google Meet and uh, is not on it, please let us know and we'll be glad to push you on. I guess we continue next week. Yeah. But this is our monthly meeting at, uh, at the platform. Uh, and uh, we'll be here in the 1st of December again uh, at the platform. And this will be, uh, is it your Jesus or the wife or something like that? The uh, real Jesus. The real Jesus. The real Jesus. Which is uh, the Bible presents it uh, such such that you can uh, you can really uh, see that in all of us what is presented in the Bible. Uh, so uh, it'll be a very interesting uh, presentation next month in the platform. So we we're covering folks from Canada who. To, uh, down down here in Virginia uh, today, uh, looking, looking at the um, folks that are uh, with us today. We want to appreciate everybody's participation. Uh, please, uh, if you can think of anything that we can do to make sure that this uh, message is passed on to the future generations, or that uh, we, we can add meaning to to uh, what's uh, what we're presenting. Please uh, let us know, and we uh, we're looking for ideas too for for carrying on the sport. We cannot, you know, individual lodges is one thing; it's just one way of doing it. Um, the the lodge of masters will always be with us. But individual lodges will come and go, and so we're not, you know, we all we all want to uh, see our lodge uh, continue in the future. The DC lodge, the New York lodge, and Philadelphia lodges, and uh, other lodges throughout the world. We want to see them all uh, perform, uh, do all they can. If they do all they can, uh, then the message will continue on. Well, the message is going to continue on whether we uh, do it or not. But it's there for us to to uh, become. And as we become, we uh, help to help ourselves and humanity. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, and then we'll see you uh, next next week. Uh, yeah, unless there's other, anything else, we still got time. Thank you very much. Thank you all for, for listening and for, for participating. Take care. Thank you.